Hari Macam mana Hari kapi Hari Hari <coughs> Now you say it after me Look in your book Hari hi, hari, hari ya ha. You have to look in your Sanskrit book. Many people don't find it yet even. Hari hi, hari, hari ya ha. Harim, hari, harin, hari na. Hari Bhyam, Hari Bhihi, Hari Ye, Hari Bhyam, Hari Bhyaha, Hari Ehe, Hari Bhyam, Hari Bhyaha, Hari Ehe, Hari Yoho, Hari Naam, Harau, Hari Yoho, Hari Shu, Hey Hari, Hey Hari, Hey Hari Yaha. Not by yourself. Two, three. Again, two, three. some mix up there. There are one, two, three, four places where it is long E. How many places? Four places which are long E. Even though that is a masculine noun ending in short E. There are four places in that declension where it ends in, where it is, there is long E. And I'm hearing a lot of mix up in that now. Please listen to it again and look at the letters now in the book. I'll say it again. Hari hi, Hari, Harayaha, Harim, Hari, Harin. Two, four, yeah. Harina, Haribhyam, Haribhihi, Haraye, Haribhyam, Haribhyaha, Harehe, Haribhyam. Hari Bhyaha, Hari Ehe, Hari Yoho, Hari Naam, Harau, Hari Yoho, Hari Shu. Hey Hare, Hey Hari, Hey Hari Yaha. Now by yourself, all together, two, three. Two, four, five, five places, eh? You have to be careful with that. All right.
some other words ending in some other words ending in e short e masculine nouns A little crop of foot. Yati. Number six is Yati. That is not like Yati Bigfoot, eh? <laughs> yati means an ascetic. Yati hi. Yati hi, Yati, Yatayaha. Yatim, Yati, Yatim. Okay, so 
Así es. Así. ¿Mm? No voy, no. Así es a sword. Sword, sword. Dur, dur jati. Dur jati is a name for Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva. Means who has a big jatla. Nripati, king. Pavi, Pavi is the name for Indra's thunderbolt. Do you know that thunderbolt Indra, Indra holds, it, holds in his hand like this? We call it Pavi. Pani, Pani is hand. Hand. Yati, I told you that just now. Yati is an ascetic. Yati comes from yat. Yat in Sanskrit means to try, to strive. Yat. From that yat, yati comes. One who is striving, an ascetic. And vyadhi? Hmm? Conduct? Culture? Contact? Hunter? Uh, that, that, this, that's vyad here. Yeah. This is vyadi means disease. Disease, sickness. Janma mrityu jara vyadi. You'll see in Gita. Janma mrityu jara vyadi. Right. Now we have to see these sentences. Let's say the words after me. Asi, Dhur Jati, Indrapati, Pavi, Pani, Yati, Vyadhi. Now you read here after me. Girehe Gramam Gachami. Not by yourself. Again. Girehe Gramam Gachami. What number one person is this? First person? Meaning? I go. Okay, so that. You know. What case and num number is this? Hmm? Singular. That means. Eh? This means? To the village. This. Kirehe? What case and? Number. But it's also there in fifth case. This appears in how many cases? Two cases. Which cases? Fifth and sixth. Right. So which cases use here now? Fifth case. If you have six cases, it's wrong. Because you can't say, I go the mountains, I go mountains to the village. Oh, that doesn't make no sense. I go from the mountain to the village. The 
could say I suppose. I go to the mountain village. I mean you could say from there, right? But ordinarily that type of that type of sentence will be written in a compound. It will not be written like this. Compound means one of the words will not be declined. It means to say you actually go to the village, but the mountain will become an adjective to the village. They are describing the village as a mountain village, like a black horse. You understand? If that is the case also, then the adjective has to take the same case as the noun. That is why it is written in a compound form. So when you split it, you understand what I am saying? Like the black horse, the mountain village. So you are describing the village. So they will have to be in the same case. I told you that before, no? the adjective has to be in the same case and gender and number and everything as the noun. Now here that is not the case. No? So then, that is by elimination. You have to say it is fifth case. Like that. Right, next one. Ramasya Gunan Kavihi Vadati. Now by yourself. Again? Again? Okay. So what is the sentence? The sentence right here when you see look like Kavihi Vadati. The poet, the poet speaks, but the poet says, right? Talks. That is the sentence. Okay, this is this is what case and number? First case singular, number and person there. Third person singular. So they match. Kavi Vadati, this poet speaks or says or tells. What he tells now? Ramasya. Gunan, the virtues or qualities of Rama. The virtues or qualities of Rama. Right, next one. Atithi nam krite. That always goes together. Eh? Like in English, you will put something like that. Atithi nam krite. Dasaha annam pachati. All together by yourself now. Again. Here, it is very difficult for me to get people in Trinidad on all years I've been teaching Sanskrit to say the, these double letters properly. When there is a double letter, you have to say the double letter. It's not anam. Annam. Say. Anam. Again. Anam. You have to say it. Eh? Annam. Again, read. So this is the sentence here. Dasaha annam pachati. Dasaha is first case. Singular annam. Singular. And pachati? Third person. Singular. And then what it means? The servant cooks food. And this is just telling some additional information. Atithinam krite. Eh? Of the guess? For the guess. 
Krite means for the benefit of. For the benefit. Krite. For the benefit. Krite, krite word has many meanings. Eh? I better not confuse your mind with that now. But right here, anytime you see Krite come at the end of a word like that, Krite. Its synonym is It's a synonym for it. Artha. So, eh? No. Did I'll tell you now? I explain it to you. Eh? Good question. So you will see something like this also. Atithinam artham. Atithinam artham means the same thing as Atithinam krite. Huh? So that artha and krite, they, they are used many times interchangeably. Anyway, now that question. So you see, of of the guests. Because of a six case, no? Benefit of the guests. And here, guests plural. Benefit of the guests. Food for benefit of the guests. That's how it comes, eh? Food for the? Food for the benefit of? Yes. Oh, that's right. Of, no, the, the, of the guest, but you have to put plural because it's plural, eh? Yes. So this krite is an indeclinable which comes at the end of words like that, I mean for the benefit. For benefit, like that. Okay, next one now. Agnihi vanasya vrikshan dahati. Read now. Again. Again, I'm not hearing everybody. Again. So the sentence is Agnihi Dati. Fire burns. That easy. These are such simple sentences. Straightforward. Fire burns. What is the name for fire? I told you already. Hmm? That also masculine noun ending in like Rama. Pawakaha. Very commonly used. Kutoya Magnihi. Power cup, where it comes. Chitti jala pavak. Ramayan. Chitti jala pavak. Gagana samira. Panchara chit ehi. Adhama sari. So to see that uses, I, I told you now, once you learn your Sanskrit, he uses Agni also. Once you learn your Sanskrit well, that Ramayana becomes easy. Because most of the words are Sanskrit only. But you will not see the Visarga. 
That's all. Tulsi Raja said, don't be saga. Why I put them two dots? They waste my time. <laughs> he just drop only two dots and put it over. Easy. OK. So fire burns. Now the additional information in there is in the middle there. What is that? Which number and case? Not masculine. Six case singular? Neuter. And friction. Which case and number? Second case, plural, masculine. So fire burns trees of the forest. How easy it is. It, children, you know, in primary school do it very easily like that. Because all straightforward cases which we did in class. Nothing complex. Nothing out of the blues. Fire burns the trees of the forest. Right. Now next. Who crap of foot handwriting is that? They're looking like ta. Supposed to be ba. Bahubhyam vriksham lumpati. Bahubhyam. Say. Bahubhyam vriksham lumpati. Lumpati, what meaning I gave? Huh? To? To break, right. So what number one person it is? Third person? Singular. Meaning? He breaks. He, she, or it? Breaks. What? He breaks the tree. He breaks the tree. Right? Then what is here now? What number one person? And what number one case? Third case? Dual. Correct. Third case, dual. Bahu means? Arm. A-R-M. Arm. So that will be, if it's third case, bit with, he breaks, he breaks the tree with his arms. Yes. I don't expect him to have three. <laughs> with his arms. If it's Rawan breaking it. <laughs> if Rawan breaking it. Two arms. So you see, you don't have to say two arms because there's a dual in Sanskrit. I mean, you don't have to write two. You don't have to write the number two. Because this itself tells it is two. There are many devices like that in Sanskrit. Eh? Many, many. But you don't have to write, it is understood there. Like here also. What is the pronoun missing there? Saha. But the pronoun it need not be there because Lumpati means he, she, or it? Break. So he is already there in Lumpati. So there is no need for the pronoun. But if you put the pronoun, then also it's not, right, not wrong. It's fine. But then you save ink and paper and labor and time. So the language is designed like that. Whereas in English,
this sentence correct, and this sentence complete in English? In English, if that he is not there, or she or whatever, right? The sentence is not complete. But you see in Sanskrit, you don't need it. Because the he, is in, he, she, or it is included in? See? So, and look how many words. One, two, three, four, five, six words before the sentence is complete. One, two, three words. And we have it there, half, 50%. And we have it clean. <laughs> In Trinidad, let me say we have it cork. <laughs> yes. Yes. But then there is no way to specify it. You will have to put the name of some, like for example, If it's a it, right, you'll have to put something like this. The gajaha. But then Bahubyam will go. You'll have to change that also. Huh? No arms, yeah. So you'll have to put something like Tunda there, drunk. With drunk. So you'll have to change it up now. Ah, you could put here Kapihi. Kapi, which I give you, ending in E. Something like that. But you don't know, there's Kapi, there's hand, there's hands they have. They have arms. <laughs> but they run on them also. Then? Ah, uh -huh, you see? No, not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Limbs. Anyway, now next one. Meghanam upari ravihi chalati. Say. Again. Again. Ravihi chalati, that is sentence. Sun goes, moves. Sun moves. The sun moves. Meghanam upari. Above the clouds, yeah. How, why Meghanam upari? Why it comes in six years? Huh? Here, six years. You're saying, see, above the clouds, where is six k's in that? <laughs> Welcome to Sanskrit. Literally, that will be translated as above of the clouds. Above of the clouds. But we don't speak like that in English. But you speak like that in Sanskrit. Meghanam upari. Yeah. In Hindi also, same thing. Eh? Same. The lang languages are different. You have to... You, you can think so much in English. But at some point, you have to start thinking in Sanskrit. The way a Sanskrit speaker will think. So, let me see if you, any close thing you could get to that in English. Indeclinable, yeah. But it is indeclinable. Above. So it's really translated literally as above of the cloud. Beyond the cloud. Or the, the clouds beyond. The sun moves and the clouds beyond. Like that. So then you get clouds, six case, right? But in ordinary English now you translate that as it moves above the clouds. Yeah. Now next one. Mm -hmm. 
जलस्य बिंदव पत्र पतंती अगेन अगेन सो दी सेंटेंस इज बिंदव पतंती वॉट इज इट ड्रॉप्स फोर ड्रॉप्स फोर Drops four. Drops of what? Water. Drops of water. Drops of water. Four. Where? On the leaf. So then you wonder why not seven case. Eh? Leaf means on the leaves. Why not seven case? If it is from the leaf, no, no. Well, they're trying to say something else. A different message trying to give there, right? Eh? Of if you put reshu on the leaves, seven case, right? I told before that there are verbs of movement that govern the second case. I told you that. There are verbs of movement. There is no clarity, no, no given list as to which verbs of movement. Huh? Yeah. So gum, sar, gachati, and all of those things, right? But just not chalati. Where is it? Chalati, movement. So here, patanti means there is also movement. So whoever has composed, this, this comes from, this I got from some book. Whoever has made it has included pat, which means to fall in that movement. And so they have used second case. Um, if you had put, if you had put, but threshu, then it is no problem. On the leaf. Like drops of water fall on the leaves. Okay. Now next one. Ishubhi nrepaha arim jayati. Say. Ishubhi nrepaha arim jayati. Again? Again? Right. So the sentence is? Nrepaha Jayati. The king conquers. The king conquers. The king conquers or defeats, whichever you want to say. The king defeats. Defeats who? The enemy. How many enemies? One enemy. It should be with arrows. Which case it is? Case and number? Third, third case? Plural. With arrows. Issue, I gave you that word also in a list with arrows. Right, next one. Somebody missing there? Huh? Eh? Visarga. You want me to say when I write it down? Ah, good. B 
बालयोहो कलिना नरह न तुष्यति अगेन अगेन तो व्हाट इज़ सेंटेंस नरहन तो श्यति व्हाट इज़ मीनिंग हैं दी करेक्ट दी मैन इज़ नॉट प्लीज्ड मैन इज़ नॉट प्लीज्ड मैन इज़ नॉट हैप्पी Contented, pleased, happy, like that, satisfied. To shati, eh? Then, Kalina, which case it is? Eh? Third case, like, like what? Harina. Kalina with the quarrel of the two boys. <laughs> so you know only two boys were quarreling. Of the two boys. With the quarrel of the two boys. See? The man is not pleased with the quarrel of the two boys. That means two boys were quarreling and the man was looking. I mean you could was looking and it's all in present tense. The man is not pleased with the quarrel of the two boys. But um, in present tense means he's looking. All that information not giving. Now next one. Munehe samaksham janaha tishthanti. Say. Again. Again. What the sentence is? Janaha. Tishthanti. Tishthanti means? Hmm? Munehe. Janaha tishthanti will be what? Tishtanti actually means sit or stand also, both. So the people stand or sit. Where? Eh? In front of the stage? <laughs> you all are sitting in front of the stage. <laughs> Sage. People sit in front of the of the stage. So what which case it will come coming fifth and sixth, eh? It come in fifth and sixth. So that means here it is sixth case. In front of the sage. Hmm? That's why I told you this our tradition is a samaksha tradition. Samakshash tradition means you can't learn Atma Gyan by YouTube or books or videos and those kind of things. There's a Samakshash tradition. The disciple has to sit in front of the... Not behind. <laughs> right. That's finished. Okay, now last week also I had started with you, Sandhi.
Now, one of the most common Sandhi rules of Sandhi you will see is the Visarga. So today, topic is Visarga Sandhi. Visarga Sandhi. I gave you some simple sandhis last week, right? Now Visarga Sandhi is the next simple one. Now, because it is a vast number, I have made a chart. I made this chart while I was in Mumbai studying as a student. So, and it's, it's still there. 20 something years. Still there. I found it in my Sanskrit book. <laughs> All right, so here's what you'll do for your chart now. You have to draw on your book. Like that.
Okay, now stop writing. You'll you'll write just now after one minute. And look here. So Visarga, you know what it is. Visarga is those two dots. Right? So all sorts of things happen to those two dots in, in under different circumstances. So those two dots Visarga, if it is preceded by a like in the first declension which you did Ramaha. So this Visarga is preceded by a. Uh, so preceded by a. Uh. If it is followed by another a, uh, like Rama, Agachat, Rama came. Let us say, right? So that means to say this Visarga is preceded by a uh, and followed by a. Uh. That Visarga will change to o. Oh. So it will be Ramo Agachat. But now you see there is a, there is a uh, Avagraha there, that S thing, which I told you. And I gave you some rule about that Avagraha. That when it is preceded by O, that, that Visarga is elided, dropped, preceded by O or A. I told you that last week or the week before. So now here, First, the Visarga will change to O. So it will be Ramo. Agachat. But then, now, this A is preceded by O. So that A will drop now. So then what will happen? You'll have this. Because of the other side. So two Sandhi rules will apply there. Two Sandhi rules will come. So now this thing actually, what you will see written in your books is Ramo Gachat. Ramo Gachat. This is how you see it in Gita and in your book, wherever written. But it's actually Rama Gachat. So now that is because of this rule here. And then the additional rule of the a uh being elided and avagraha is put in its place. So visarga, avagraha, all these names you have to remember. Now see here, if the visarga is preceded by a uh and followed by any of the other vowels now from a uh all the way down to o, oh, the whole line, what happens to it? Drops. So that visarga will be dropped. It will not be there. But you have to know that it is there. You will have to know. No, to get the meaning of your sentence and all. You will have to know that there is a visarga there which has been dropped because of a sandhi rule. Like that. And in many places, if it is preceded by e all the way down to o. If it is preceded by any one of them and followed by a, uh, it is changed to ra. Followed by any one of these other vowels, still ra, all the way till here. Any soft consonants, some soft consonants still changes to ra. And then after that, it follows these rules here. So that chart becomes very, very important. Otherwise, you have to remember each one of them. But by usage, by a lot of usage, you will not need the chart. That's why I just found it. <laughs> By usage, you will know, well, this has happened here. After a while, it becomes easy for you. But this is the chart. And see, a lot of dropping here. All right. Now you copy down this chart. Now, with regard to this, we will start doing a lot of examples. Then you will get it. The free concert is there tonight. Pratyahar concert. Ganga Dhara tomorrow morning. All those who are coming to Ganga Dhara, raise your hand, let me see. Yeah, everybody should make an effort to come. Very important. Ganga Dhara. 
no Ramayan today, tomorrow, Ramayan resume on Monday. And tomorrow, no Sunday morning, Satsang and Bal Vihar will be there also. We'll all be in Ganga Thara. Next week, Saturday, what is the date? Tent. Check the Saturdays coming up for me. What, tell me what dates they will be. Tenth, next one, seventeenth, and and twenty-fourth. It look like you have some holidays now. Because here in the ashram, the Saturday come on this side, 10, 17, 24. Acharya Jitendra Ji from our ashram in Chicago, M03 Chicago, will be coming to take classes for the brahmacharis. But in this, at the same time, I have to go and teach the students in YEP in Dallas. But I don't think Acharya can continue my classes. <laughs> I'll be out. For, so next week, Saturday, no classes. So three Saturdays. That, that is bad. Not good. Three Saturdays. I have a yagne first in Bahamas. Then I'll go to Dallas. And there are a lot of thirsty devotees outside. They want Yagna way guru. But I did it because Acharya will be here. Your course is incidental. The Vedanta course is substantive. All right. So we'll resume then. What will be the next Saturday? After the 24th. 1st of July. 1st of July. We'll resume on 1st of? July. July. That means you get your summer holidays in June. <laughs> you get your summer holidays now in June. After that, no holidays. Hopefully. Means summertime when everybody have holidays, you will have school. <laughs>